and good morning everybody and uh, welcome to the latest in our virtual field trips. Uh, my name is Chris, I run the Grist and Gardens Heritage Site in Karameas and I'm here uh, with you today from our secret bunker. Uh, actually I'm not at the Grist today to be honest, I'm actually coming to you uh, live from uh, my den. Uh, <laughs> it uh, it's easier to do what we're doing today uh, from here rather than uh, from the grist mill because I didn't have the things to do. So before I get into today's topic, I just wanted to say uh, a big thank you to everybody who's been supporting us over the last little while. Um, there was a wonderful news article uh, here in the uh, uh, in the Okanagan just uh, just this morning off of one of our local media outlets talking about these uh, field trips and encouraging people to check them out. So hopefully. Uh, Hopefully that means lots of you are going to come and, uh, and, and, and check in on our virtual field trip today. Uh, also, it's prompted a, a little flurry of people uh, supporting us financially. And for all of you doing that, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, the, uh, as I've said before, the best way that you can support us is by uh, buying a season's pass to our site. Even if you don't intend on using it, it's a, it's a great way uh, to send a little cash our way to help us pay the bills. So, uh, yeah. Here we are, uh, hiding away uh, in uh, the den in my house today, rather than at the grist mill, uh, because uh, the eggs that we are currently incubating are actually here, rather than at the grist mill. It's just easier for me to keep a, a regular eye on them. Uh, hopefully, in about uh, a week and a half, we're going to have little baby chicks coming out of these eggs, which is pretty exciting. So. So before we get into checking out the eggs themselves and seeing how they're developing, just want to talk a little bit about eggs. Uh, so I happen to have here a carton of eggs from the grocery store. Uh, these are uh, going to be one of these is going to be my breakfast later. Uh, here we are. So uh, we have a beautiful regular chicken egg, and it's hard to believe that this little egg has everything it needs to turn into. Uh, a baby chick that is capable of feeding itself, of moving around, of keeping itself warm, of starting to grow feathers, of all of that stuff. That the parts of this egg are everything that it needs. Because it sure doesn't seem like it when, uh, when you break one open and have it for breakfast. Now, yesterday, if you were watching our video, I was talking about how a wheat seed, in fact, most seeds, have the same parts as an egg. Well, here we get to kind of do it in reverse. So, First of all, you've got the outer shell, and the shell is there to protect everything inside. It's, it's thin, but it's actually quite, quite strong. Um, it keeps from uh, getting crushed when the mama hen is, uh, is sitting on them, and it helps keep the, uh, the developing chicks protected. Now inside, you already know what's inside an egg because you eat it for breakfast all the time. We have two things that are important to us, and one is the yellow, the yolk, and the other is the white. So really, when you look at an egg like this, it's got three parts. It's got the shell on the outside, it's got the yolk, and it's got the, the, the egg white. Now, there is actually a fourth thing that we care about when we're hatching an egg. What we care about is not at the, not at the sharp end, which we're used to seeing up. It's at the, the, the more rounded end. There's actually an air bubble there. And that air bubble is really important for the developing chick because it's got to breathe air somehow. And so it's breathing, it's going to breathe as it develops out of that air sac that's at the rounded end of the egg. We'll get to see that in just a few minutes when I turn off the lights and we candle these eggs. Now, we're going to take these eggs and we need to create the same kind of conditions that would happen under a mama, under a mama hen. And so what we need is we need a nice warm temperature because they're going to be nice and warm under her. And we also need uh, a decent little bit of humidity. We need enough moisture in the air that the egg doesn't dry out too fast because it is losing a little bit of moisture just through the shell all the time. So we need to keep the, the humidity up and we need to keep the temperature up. And to do that, we actually have a special tool that we're going to use. We have a little incubator, which is actually sitting right next to the camera right now. So I'm going to do that in just a second. Now, before we look at the incubator, I just want to show you the inside of the egg. You know what the inside of an egg looks like. I know you do, but we're going to take a look at it anyways, because this is science, right? So I have an egg. I have one of my favorite little plates, and I'm going to crack this egg and then move the camera down so that you can see it. So we're going to crack this open. And don't worry, I'm not going to waste this egg. 
this egg after the fact is going to turn into my breakfast. Well, my second breakfast, because I'm actually part hobbit. So I'm gonna grab the camera here, and I am going to reverse the camera, there we are, to take a little look at our broken open egg. Now, unfortunately with this plate, it's hard to see the egg white, but you can definitely see the yolk, and you can definitely see a little hint of something else. That little, little start of things is where the chick would develop in an egg that's being well treated, in an egg that is developing into a baby chick, it's going to start from there and it's going to slowly absorb the yolk and slowly absorb all the egg white and turn itself into a chick. Hard to believe that something you make scrambled eggs out of could do that. Now, to make all that happen, like I said before, we need to have the right temperature and humidity. And right here is my little incubator. Now, it, it keeps a steady temperature. It's got a fan inside to keep the air moving around. Uh, and I put a little bit of water into the bottom of it every day. And as that evaporates, that creates uh, just the right temperature and humidity. Now, I've got one little thermometer right here. And you can see it says 100. Ideally, we want it just below 199.5 is perfect. If it's a little higher, these guys are going to come out a little bit faster. If it's a, a little lower, they're going to come out a little bit slower, but we don't want to mess with that too much. So our temperature is looking pretty good today. It usually is. This machine's pretty good at keeping, uh, keeping itself under control. If we look right here, you can see that we have a fan. That's what this is. This right here is how we control the temperature. And inside, you can see the eggs. Now the eggs are all sitting in these little holders, these little yellow holders that actually move very, very slowly. Under a real mama chicken, uh, she moves the eggs around every once in a while as she resettles herself and gets comfy again. So the eggs move normally, naturally. Well, rather than me turning them by hand all the time, we have this automatic mover. And so what it does is it slowly rocks back and forth and just helps those eggs develop in the right way. Now, I am going to open up this uh, this thing. Let's see here. Ah, ooh, it's really warm and humid in there. And we have a whole bunch of eggs inside. Okay. Now, I put this one aside because this one actually is the egg that I discovered last night is not growing normally. In fact, it stopped growing completely. If I hold a bright light up to it and we look inside, which we might do in a minute, there's actually nothing there. Uh, it didn't have the right temperature, um, maybe, or more likely, if we look closely, it was cracked. And the egg knows that it shouldn't develop into a chick if it's got a little damage like that. So that happened before we even got it here, uh, but uh, it, this one unfortunately stopped developing. The one that I actually want to look at is further inside here. Is this one way back in the corner. I also have another thermometer in here telling me that it's 30 de 38 degrees. Okay, so this egg is the one that we're going to take a look at inside right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a really, really bright light to do that. So I've got a little egg holder that I'm just going to put this in for a second as I reorganize myself a bit. We'll put this up someplace nice and high so that it's out of the, so that it's there. Now the brightest light I could find, believe it or not, is the light on my phone. So uh, we're going to just uh, switch around here for a second and we're going to use a really, really bright light. We're going to shine it right onto the egg. We're going to turn off the lights and we're not going to be able to see inside perfectly, but it's going to give us a good sense. So magically, a phone has appeared with a, uh, with a light in it. And uh, okay, so we're going to turn off the lights and we are going to candle our egg. Now, right away, you can see, if you look closely, you can see that air sac, right? You can see that right on the top. It's very bright. If we can move around just right, you might get a little hint of veins and arteries inside the egg. Those are going all the way to the air sac so that the chick can breathe. Now, I'm not going to move at all, but things inside the egg are moving just a little bit right now. Let's see if we can get a slightly better angle. Yeah, it's just starting to move a little bit. Now, it's still not very big. Oh, there we go. That's a great view. Holy crow. 
That's very active. That's wonderful. So we're going to do this quicker with each of our eggs, one at a time, just to make sure that they're all okay. I'm not going to do that on camera because it's too hard to, to juggle everything. But we know that that egg is developing well. Now, in about uh, 12 more days, let me turn this back around. There I am. Hi. So in about 12 more days, that egg is going to start to hatch. It's actually going to, uh, it's actually going to have a chick come out of it, which I'm very excited about. So we're going to check in on those eggs once or twice more over the time that we're, uh, we're letting, them, uh, uh, letting them incubate here. And we'll be able to see further and further development. Now, I don't have the perfect setup to do this kind of detailed candling. I don't have a proper candling station with the really bright lights to really get a good look inside. But I hope that that gave you a little sense. You certainly, inside the egg, if you looked carefully, you could see uh, the, the blood vessels going to the uh, air sac to, to get air. You also saw some movement in there. Now, the, uh, the, the chick that's developing is still pretty small. It's only maybe, you know, part of my finger part of my pinky finger. It's still very, very small. It won't be until just before it hatches. 21 days it takes. Once, about, about 21 days. Then, it, then it'll be taking the full size of the, of the egg shell and it'll start to be ready to start to bust out of it. So we'll catch that. We'll catch that live in about a week. Uh, probably next Wednesday or next Thursday. In the meantime, we're going to keep doing videos every single day on other topics. If today is the first day that you've joined us, welcome. It's really nice to have you here. If uh, you've uh, signed in before and I see a few names uh, popping up on the screen that I recognize, hello people. Hello uh, Anya and Aaron and Tara and Ruth and uh, Tamara and kids and everybody else. This is really great. Now, although I'm coming to you live currently from my den, normally we do these things at the grist mill. So tomorrow our topic is going to be all about seeds. Uh, we actually have to get some uh, seeds in the ground today and tomorrow. Today we're planting peas in the afternoon and tomorrow we're going to be planting some other things. So I want to go through my seeds with you and we can talk about some things that we might, might plant together. Also, I might give you some ideas on some things that you could do at home as well. Now, if you like these videos, please tell other people about them. Uh, the more viewers we get, the better. It's really helpful for us. And we'd really, really appreciate your, your support. If you go to the Gristmill website, uh, please uh, consider buying a season's pass to the site. We might not be open normally this year, but we still need to make some kind of money to keep the lights on and to pay the bills. So uh, one of the easiest ways to do that is to buy a season's pass. If we have a really short season this year, that's okay. We'll make sure that your season's pass is good for next year as well. But uh, any help that you can provide would be most appreciated. So spread the word, keep tuning in, and consider buying a season's pass. Anyways, my name again is Chris. I'm with the Grist Millen Gardens. It's been great to spend some time with you today, and we'll see you again tomorrow at 10 o'clock right here. Bye-bye now.